CSS isolation is a tool that allows us to apply custom styles to only a specific component in Blazor. In this 10 minute training episode, I'll demonstrate how CSS isolation works and how to configure it for your application. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology, including best practices and implementation details. However, sometimes you just need to get a quick introduction to a topic. That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's jump right in. And I already have a Blazor application built. This is a Blazor web app in .NET 8. It is uh, using auto, which means it has both the, the, the server project and the client project. This is where we put all of our auto components. And we have in here no sample data. So I didn't include the uh, the bootstrap sample data or the, the weather or the counter, anything else. This is all just a really simple demo. I want to keep it as clean as possible. So with that, one of the things I did do is in the client, I added this components folder and I added two components. They're almost identical. So the demo with CSS, has an H3 and a paragraph tag, and it just says demo with isolated CSS. And the demo without CSS says demo without isolated CSS, but still an H3 in a paragraph tag. And the paragraph is just lorem ipsum text. So right now they are the same. In my app.css, I did modify down here the H3 in paragraph for the entire site. So if you have an H3, you get the color blue. And if you have a paragraph tag, then your paragraph font style will be italics and the font size will be one rem. So with that, let's just launch the application and see it running because I put these on the home page, So they should um, show up right away when you see them. In case we have demo with isolated CSS, there we go. And demo without isolated CSS. Now we haven't changed anything yet. They're both the same. We haven't added the CSS isolation yet. So they both show up as blue for the H3 and they both have italicized text for the paragraph. So that's that's pretty straightforward. You know, the, the homepage just has those two components right on the page. That's with applying a CSS that applies to the entire site. And if we go here to app.razor, we can see that we have app.css applied. But then right down here, we have this CSS, which says CSS demo, that's the name of the project, dot styles, dot CSS. And there is no uh, corresponding file anywhere in our project. This is a file that gets built automatically. We'll see this in just a minute. But first, let's add our CSS isolation. So. We're going to add CSS isolation to the demo with CSS. So I'm going to add a new file, Control Shift A, and I'll call this demo with CSS dot razor dot CSS. So it's the same name as the component, and we add dot CSS at the end. And this is going to add it underneath that file, which is a little frustrating sometimes when you don't realize there's a little arrow right here that indicates there's more things underneath, but this is how it kind of groups them together to tell you that this CSS will apply just to this component and not to our entire application. And it will override anything that is in the global CSS. So let's change our CSS. We're going to say, uh, actually, you know what? We're going to copy, just have a starting point. It'll be easier to copy what we have already, our global CSS. And we'll we'll paste it in here, but we'll change the color from blue to, to red. And we'll change the font style to normal. And we'll change the size. Let's just change it a little bit. Let's do 1.2 rem. It'll be noticeable, but not hugely different. So I've applied the CSS now in this isolated CSS file. Because of the fact that in our app.razor, this comes after app.css. And because of the cascading nature of CSS, this will override this. So the custom style of the isolation will override the general app.css styles. So let's see an action by running this again and seeing how our code or our view changes, but then also why it changes. 
where I'll look at what the actual file is. So there we go. So we have a red header, H3, and our, our text is a bit bigger. It's not, and it's also not italicized. So this is applying just to this component because we changed an H3, but both of these are H3s, but only one changed because it's the one that had the isolation applied to it. So this is how you apply CSS styles to one particular component without messing up the rest of your application. Now, personally, I don't use this a ton because I tend to create things in CSS instead that can handle this just fine. But let's see how this actually works. So let's hit F12 and yes, we're gonna open the developer tools and let's open the developer tools um, at the bottom instead of on the side. So we can actually make them a little bit larger. And what we're gonna do is go to our sources and see what we have here. We have our app.css and down here is where we have our H3. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Um, we have our H3 with our color of blue and italicized in one rem. But we also have this CSS demos, demo.styles.css, which has some another style or so, but it also has this import statement, CSS demo.client.bundle.scp.css. And what is that? Well, it's right above it. If we click on that, you'll see that components slash demo with CSS.razor, this is where that CSS comes in. And it says H3 color red, paragraph font style is normal and font size is 1.2 rem. But after each of these it also has a square bracket with this with weird identifier. Well, what is this and how does this work? So the way CSS isolation works is that when you're using it, what happens kind of behind the scenes is that when you create or add that component, notice right here, we have H3, but it says H3 and that says B dash PC XX N two Z M six U. Does that look familiar? We go back to our source B dash PC XX N two Z M six U. So what it's doing is saying, I'm going to apply this H3 style, but only to components that have this identifier. And so by doing so, it allows us to to um, isolate this CSS to only apply specifically to things that are marked with this identifier, which we have the H3 and the paragraph. Now it's not an ID tag. This is something different, but what it allows us to do is apply the same identifier to multiple elements on the page that are gonna be then isolated from the other things. So that's how CSS isolation works inside of Blazor components. If you don't want to use it, no problem, just don't use it. And if you want to go even further, you could even get rid of the um, the entry right here in app.css, you can get rid of this, and then you wouldn't have any. Or what you can do is you can, um, you can also just modify these on the fly. So I still have this open, by the way. If I were to change this to, um, let's go crazy here, 2.2 RAM. I were to save this because of hot reload. There we go. It still works. So you can do all kinds of fun stuff with this. This again is not something I use every day, but every once in a while there comes a time when it makes sense to use this instead of modifying my overall CSS file. Again, normally I modify just the main CSS, but some cases uh, warrant having a CS isolation, and this allows us to do that very easily. Okay, and if you're having having some wonky problems with Blazor, I've had it before, where it's kind of kind of bit me in the butt. Look for this CSS isolation. Maybe it's overriding something you thought was going to be a certain way. All right, thanks for watching, and as always, I am Tim Corey.